Welcome to this final, final edition of Creative Corner, uh, which when we talk about creativity and advertising, powered by Ipsos Creative Excellence. I'm Sean Dix, and I um, lead uh, Creative Excellence globally at Ipsos, and I have with me Adam. Hello, Adam Sheridan, I'm Head of Products and Analytics. Awesome. Merry Christmas, Adam. And a Merry Christmas to you too, Sean. Uh, however, a, a bar humbug today for Christmas advertising. Yeah, I, I hear you, but it, it is a big event, right? I mean, we have a lot of stuff going on. We've, we've published our own creative corner around Christmas advertising yeah. uh, for more people generally, and then even in, in, in the UK in particular, where we're sitting right now. John Lewis is one of the brands that people look forward to. Yeah, indeed. It's a big event. Christmas advertising, uh, the industry looks forward to it, regular people look forward to it, and you mentioned John Lewis, but the archetype of Christmas advertising in a way, emotion, pulling on the heartstrings, um, and, and good for the brand as well. It's, it's been consistently over the years, that campaign measured to be effective for for footfall for sales. Um, however, that's my bar humbug. I personally see just so many brands now taking that playbook of, of John Lewis, that strategy, and, and just kind of retrofitting it to, 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 to their brand, to their campaigns. And, and, and what I just keep seeing is the, the same advertising, the same story, um, the, the, the heartstring pulling moments, the, the use of children and animals, uh, soundtracks uh, with, with, with somber tones and, um, and a concluding moment. And, and, and so I think that's not such a great thing for audiences at this time of the year, personally. And, and also, it's not so good for, for brands. So, so bar humbug again uh, to, to, that, to that appropriation of, of the John Lewis style. Well, finally, we have a Misfits Christmas ad. Uh, this is um, for Belvedere Vodka featuring Daniel Craig. As we know, he's uh, retired from his bond duties. Uh, and we see him in a way that we haven't seen him before. In fact, a very unique way with him dancing. Maybe you like it, some may say he's not a very good dancer. Nevertheless, it's a great uh, piece of advertising. It really entertains you to the core. Great music, uh, uh, some interaction with the brand at the end. Um, I really like it personally. And I, I think a lot of people have watched it on YouTube. We've seen three and a half million views in the last three weeks and it's been spoken about in the industry. The million dollar question, the detail is always in the data. Um, is it really effective? Um, yeah, so we, we, we evaluated that ad in Creative Spark, our ad evaluation solution, and um, did so in the US uh, amongst a sample of people who, who drink alcohol spirits. And it was an extraordinarily strong performer. A creative effect index, that's our sales validated uh, metric of, of short term sales with potential of 260. It, it's actually the best performing ad we've ever tested in the US. And I suppose the question is, well, why? Why is yeah, it such a strong exactly. performer? And, it, and if you look at the other measures that we have in Creative Spark, I think you start to see why. That, that, um, that on the one hand, you, you may think if you, if you have a traditional view of how advertising works, uh, you may look at this ad and think, well, it looks like more a music video than it does an ad. You know, where, where are the, 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 the selling points? Where's the USP? Where's the rational information? Where's the ingredients? Where's mm. was the, the taste of the product, etc.? cetera? Um, but we know from source evidence that actually uh, it, it's other things that matter. It's, uh, it, it's how much you entertain people. It, it, it's the, if you show them something they haven't seen before that, that gets them uh, leaning in and looking more. And, and it's holding some form of empathy for the audience. And I, and I feel in this case, it's that kind of whimsical fun that Daniel Craig represents uh, in the ad. It's that feeling of, of, of how one might hope to feel at this time of the year, uh, at Christmas time, having some mm. fun with, with a drink in your hand. What, why not? And it's those types of ads that deliver that kind of creative experience of entertainment, as well as holding it for the, for the audience, they are more effective. Mm. So, so for me, at least, it's not a surprise that this type of ad that's as near to a music video as it is an ad is as effective uh, as, as it is. And it's a true, therefore, misfit um, uh, advertising. Now, I love you. I love that you hit on that because obviously we've seen the book that you've authored, that these two elements you speak about, entertainment 
is very important for memory and coding, advertising that entertains. Having that inter- empathy piece is 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 where we get the extraordinary piece, that 20% lift. But very well done, actually, and I'd say the glass is half full, not empty. But of course, it's a new approach for, for Daniel Cray, and as we've said, we've never seen him like this before, and Belvedere Vodka. Mm-hmm. Is it necessarily new for, for that sector in the industry? Well, there's, we've seen, of course, a lot of chatter about this ad. Uh, so it's certainly captured the attention of the industry. And, and there's this prevailing, I think, narrative at the moment that, that this represents a new trend of advertising, that, that it's about salience first and, um, and, and information uh, and claims uh, second. Um, but, but I don't personally subscribe to that view. I, I think uh, we've seen, we, we see echoes of the past in this ad in many ways and and, and the drinks category which uh, we're both familiar with, um, mm. with with the clients we work with uh, i think we can see those echoes of the past in that strategy of just having simple fun right so we think about um past campaigns in, in the drinks category so uh, dilly dilly for bud line mm. uh, what's up for budweiser uh, these ads but by definition are about silliness and, and, and just simple fun and some social currency as opposed to really saying anything in particular Absolutely. about the brand. And I do personally feel that Belvedere continues that trend rather than starts a new one. It's new for them in their execution, but it's a continuation of that kind of trend. And, and that's why we see it in the evidence um, yeah. that, that we profile in this. I would agree with you. There, there are several other options. I mean, we saw some comfort um, with the, with the, the gentleman who's wearing a speedo walking down the beach and feeling comfortable with himself, the speedo is obviously too small. But it's a great way of how it's a, it's an entertaining story, but it hits what the brand is positioned as right in the middle. Um, it reminded me of um, back in two thousand and eleven when Heineken launched the Open New York World campaign with uh, with uh, the entrance. Um, you know, after seeing Belvedere and Daniel Craig in the story. It almost looked identical to me. So a very similar kind of story. Obviously, it's not the same one to one, but a similar kind of story. What you just described. So entertainment, um, having empathy for people, showing you know dialing up to that higher benefit for that the brand wants to position themselves as. They're actually quite smart. So yes, there's a bit of silliness. I think we, we've seen that, but there is some purpose behind that as well, right? Yes. Well, mm. and, and and the use of the word purpose there is. Mm. I think it's purpose to sell vodka, by the way, and and it, and, it, and and what we've measured suggests it, it has the potential to sell a lot of vodka, which is, uh, I think, good news for Belvedere. But yes. again, it's also a good experience. So it's good yeah. news for audiences as well, rather than seeing the same ad again and again at so this time of year. Breaking the the shackles of conformity. So finally, a Christmas ad you like? Yes, no humbug here. No, no, this this is a great ad. It's it's an anti Christmas ad yeah. at the same time. My hope is it's a, a source of inspiration for brands and agencies to, to maybe just think about how they can develop their own Christmas advertising and, and, and just don't always look to others. Don't, mm. don't always think, if I go for that playbook, it's going to deliver for me. Um, think how you can deliver something unique that's fun, uh, that's true to you, and, uh, and therefore holding empathy for the people you want to choose you. And, mm. and Belvedere is a great example of that. And and, and uh, kudos to them for, for putting this ad into the world. Absolutely. Kudos to Albion Match and the agency that created this. Um, great stuff. And I've enjoyed speaking to you um, with finally this Misfits Christmas ad. If the audience wants to learn more about Misfits, um, there's a book that you've written. It uh, speaks a lot about um, the themes that we've discussed today. Uh, get in touch with us. We'd love to speak to you about it. It's a great story, inspiring story, and very refreshing. So thanks for listening to us today and wishing you all a happy holiday season and Merry Christmas, Adam. And a Merry Christmas indeed. No more bar humbugs. <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs>